What's going on guys, College Lefty Gaming, and today I have for you guys a squad update as well as a ranked seasons gameplay and the 89 Trevor Hoffman debut. As you can see here, I'm at 80% 80 per, 80 of the Trevor Hoffman or 85%. I, uh, I also recently picked up Aaron Judge. I had about 220,000 stubs. Figured uh, Aaron Judge could po possibly get an upgrade. He's hitting like almost 350 with a bunch of home runs and driving in a, a bunch of guys, so he's hitting very well. Could probably get a, a contact upgrade. I don't think he's striking out as much this year as well. But um, if you take a look, I've completed all the the submissions. I would say the gold the gold missions and silver and bronze player missions. I've completed a couple team epics in the Tigers, Cardinals, and Seattle Mariners. I've also made progress on a couple other team epics like the Reds, the Twins, a few other ones working towards that five. Um, yeah, I come, as you can see, I completed a few as we go here. <clears throat> Made some progress and just through grinding uh, these these recent programs that just came out on Friday. But yeah, take a look. Uh, I could go through some of these programs. I've made a lot of progress on some of these immortal cards as well as uh, I've completed all the career arcs except for the the last stats mission with the diamond 89 Trevor Hoffman. So I figured I'd just get those through ranked seasons. You need like bunch of innings pitched 20 saves and a bunch of strikeouts as well so figured out eventually just get those but yeah kind of just go through all the team epics show you what which missions i have completed which ones i haven't kind of just wanted to go through and check at the same time to whether or not i completed some of these as i was going i still need a couple more wins in the event i'm sitting at like 18 wins in the event i need to get that uh wade boggs as well as the, the uh what is it the mother's day yeah the mother's day equipment today's mother's day so yeah the mother's day equipment item uh pack or whatever hopefully get those cleats i didn't think the dd gregorius april player of the month card was worth it for me to lock in that that amount of stubs i probably could have got him right when he came out i could have bought the albies and the hater and and bought all the cards and locked them in i didn't think it was worth it though i figured i'd make my progress on some of the career arcs that they were going to release shortly after that and i'm glad i did that because i think this trevor hoffman is going to be the best closing pitcher in the game i i did use him in this ranked seasons game coming up he didn't pitch as much as i would have liked to just because of the way the game was i didn't want to uh, use him too much because i want to use him as much as i can in games that really matter so so uh yeah i just want to show you guys some progress i'm 80 um 80 percent of the way done with piazza 30 percent of the way done with pool holes is probably the least i've the least progress i've made on all the immortals but if i complete these two stat missions right here i can get the diamond one and uh look I'll, i'm looking to do that just gonna take me a little bit of time i'll probably do that after i get to world series and if, if i can get to world series i have a couple more games to play as i'm in the ds right now but uh yeah, I have a couple more games to play to get there. If I win a multiple in a row, then I could get there and then grind for this Immortal Albert Pujols. But um, yeah, I finished all the I finished the Molitor program, which allowed me to get that to that gold Pujols at 30%. But yeah, this uh, this goose goose gossage just needed ten, about 10 more saves or 15 saves. I I didn't quite see how many there were there. But once uh, once I get the Trevor Hoffman program done, I'll get the gold goose, and then I could probably work towards those saves more effectively online without having to grind versus the computer uh that that nolan ryan i just need his stat missions as well as this tom siever chipper jones i'm at 85 percent cal ripkin i'm at 70 just need the exchange missions bob gibson i'm at 60 and i'm waiting really waiting for that griffey but i kind of went over those a couple times went through through it all multiple times just wanted to show you guys that i had completed all these but yeah, I mean, definitely as a grind, it got me to uh, about a diamond level, yeah, diamond level 54 so far, and I haven't done any collections. If I was to do some of those collections, like collect 25 players of each team, that would also get me more XP, and, and I could rank up faster that way. But right now, I mean, there's no re even reason to be a gold level. It doesn't matter if you're a gold level or not. It doesn't give you any advantage right now or anything. The only thing uh, I was doing this for was to get as much progress on these immortals as I could before some of these other programs drop because I think some of these last programs will be expensive to get. Um, if I'm just trying to get a head start as much as I can and have everything done so that way I could just try to build my stubs up. And that's the thing is I'm not locking any live series diamonds in because 
I'll be able to sell guys like Aaron Judge, Bryce Harper, uh, some other guys that I have on the bench or like that are on even my squad, some gold like Cody Bellinger, some stuff like that. If I, if I have to sell those guys, George Springer, if I have to sell those guys in order to get like Immortal Griffey or someone else, then I'll definitely do that. And I'll have to build my team up in other ways, but I have enough diamonds through doing this and it wasn't cheap either. It spent me. It's. It took me about. I don't know. Four hundred to four hundred fifty thousand stubs. 50, yeah, four hundred fifty thousand, right around there. Maybe even five hundred thousand to complete all these at the time that I did it, because it's only a couple months into the game. But I really wanted to focus on getting these guys, and and uh, yeah, and I mean, here comes a. I'm gonna get into the gameplay pretty soon here. I just wanted to give you guys a backstory on. Uh, the squad update but we're gonna play this this game I'm at uh, about 778 rating or something like that high 70s high 700s and we're going up against a pretty good team he's got Bryce Harper that Jorge Posada from the collections he's got a, a diamond I think center fielder creative player yeah it was in the center fielder his record there 131 and 96 so he's played a bunch of ranked seasons games on the season in only two months which is that's quite a few games yeah if you ask me I've only played about 40 something games of ranked, I played probably, I've played mostly events. I played over 150 events games. Played a, a, probably a couple, about 50 something BR games. So I mean, I've played a good amount of games as well. Just haven't played as, as many nine inning games. But there to lead off the game there with Matt Kemp, laser beam one there off Chris Sale right to him. I kind of just wanted to show uh, a few pitches here. We we're pitching with Don Sutton, who's I think is one of the best starting pitchers in this game right now. Aaron Judge on his debut. I, I used him in BR, and he was one of the reasons why I went 12-0 in that on that BR run. In there, I squared up that ball. Just didn't get the didn't get the result I was looking for there. Hit it on a line drive right to center. But I I did do really well with Aaron Judge. I was hitting about 500 with him, like seven for fifth or seven for 14, something something like that. Seven for 13, and with a couple homers and mostly extra base hits. So I figured he's pretty good. I'll put him in left field. I also have that Jay Buhner, so I just put him on the bench has a good bench bat for power versus both sides. But here we're just, we're cruising along. We don't have a run yet. We, I don't even know if we have a hit, but I know he doesn't have a hit yet. And here's actually his first hit right there. I'm using more of a defensive base infield. I got pretty much everyone with good fielding. My worst fielding is my second baseman, which is my creative player at like 85 or 86. So I'm, I've been making, I've been making all the plays in this game defensively and noticed that my defense has just been outstanding I've been getting a lot of weak ground balls um, I'm looking to actually use this team more in, in my push for World Series I'm going with more of a defensive base because it still has a good amount of power in this lineup but definitely looking towards getting more diamond fielders with good uh, with good hitting stats like once I get that Griffey and the Chipper Jones I know Chipper Jones doesn't have diamond fielding but once I get some of those guys with great great power and decent fielding I want to I want to balance out my the rest of my team with with really good fielding so that's kind of where I'm what I'm thinking about doing but here we finally late in the game sixth inning or so we finally get a, a pitch that we were sitting on low slider showed the last a couple pitches there that I was looking for a low pitch maybe a low changeup, low fastball whatever he throws a slider hit hit it the other way finally got like that wasn't much, hit much better than any of the other ones that I showed I mean yeah, yes and no, there, there were, but even that home run didn't get the highest exit velocity. I didn't take a look at the wind during this game. It might have been blowing in. I don't know. I just noticed that neither one of us could really get anything going at the plate during this game. So I'm like, all right, I got to warm somebody up. Even though I'm at the, the top of my lineup, I was uh, p pitching pretty well with Sutton. And he was pitching very well with Chris Sale. I mean, I was debating on picking up Chris Sale after this game just because he, he is tough to pick up. His pitches seemed to come in a little bit differently than other pitchers and uh, yeah he was tough to hit but just doing pretty well with Sutton here dealing that was his 80 89 overall created center fielder and we got to deal with Bryce Harper here Bryce Harper just has those good quirks I threw him a good uh, slurve no slurve he doesn't throw a slurve I threw him a good sweeping uh, screwball that's what it is can't even speak but I threw him a good sweeping or uh, screwball and uh Followed up that with the sinker, and he hit the sinker. Bryce Harper has quirks against both of those guys, but luckily he's taking a lead through a couple pickoffs over there. And I was able to get him, which is kind of stupid because he, he needs all the help he can get right now. Down one, he needs those, that base runner. This ball could have easily been a double in the gap. Uh, depends on if 
he was able to get Bryce Harper in scoring position. I don't know if he was trying to steal, whatever. But that changes the, the whole entire inning. Here, Bryce Harper comes up to the plate for us. I kind of thought I hit that one pretty decently. The feedback didn't really say, didn't really say uh, that I did. It was kind of early and good. I thought I was pretty much right on that. I, I might have been a little early. It just that's what happened and, and grounded out into the shift. That was really all that happened that inning. But here's a great play by Ozzy Smith. I wanted to show you guys 99 fielding. Most most guys, that's a base hit. You know, 72 speed. That's definitely a base hit. Uh, about I don't know seven seven times out of ten, depending on the fielder you have there. But here he brings in Mike Mustakis for Anthony Rendon late in the game, which is a good move. I mean he's trying to get that lefty righty matchup, and he goes against the shift. He was about a foot away from hitting a double. Instead he goes against the shift still, hits the single, which probably would have been a ground ball right to Ozzy if he was playing at regular depth. But that's beside the point because now next pitch or next at bat we get a double play ball Taylor made against Daniel Murphy. Gets us out of the inning there. That's a pretty big jam to get out of. I wasn't sure if he was going to pinch hit for Daniel Murphy, bring in someone with more power, but he might not have had a second baseman here as we hit it to the second baseman. So I thought I hit that slider pretty good, and, and I did square it up pretty decently, but lefty, lefty, I I was on top of it. Hit a ground, hit a ground ball right into the shift. Billy Williams doesn't have the most power here. Here's an interesting situation. I could tell he was really having trouble hitting Don Sutton because he walks Ozzy Smith with good speed to get to him and I'm thinking I'm like okay well I'm not going to take out Don Sutton right now I don't think there's any reason to because I have Trevor Hoffman and Alex Wood two of the best closing pitchers in the game I tried to hit and run I really thought if I could get that ball to the right side there that's a run that's a run with 87 speed and the hit and run but unfortunate I figured you know what we got to go into the into the ninth inning with Don Sutton I don't usually go for a complete game but he's at 62 pitches and I mean here I was thinking about taking out Billy Williams earlier in the game I didn't have Yadier Molina playing first there and just messed up. He messed up and then uh, Judge runs into the wall. I probably could have threw him out at second if he didn't run into the wall there. But just an unfortunate mistake there. Ty and Run gets on base in scoring position and Ozzy Smith makes that play. Saves the run probably. With the, with the worst fielder there, he might have been able to score on that. I just don't know based on the animation I would have gotten. I don't, I'm not sure. Here we bring in Alex Wood. So we probably should have pinch hit for our pitcher in the previous inning, but hindsight's 2020. I didn't know what that what was gonna happen. If uh, if Billy Williams makes that play, we're done, he's down to his final out, and Bellinger's up with the lefty on the mound, and it was a good move. But a little bit of a different situation here. We do get the jam shot though with the sinker inside, almost a double play because his, his runner didn't really react, re really react there. But now Trevor Hoffman's gonna make his debut in the top of the ninth, down the opponent down to his final out. He's going to throw the change up low to the created player. And one pitch, he gets the pop fly. I thought that pitch could have been crushed. I kind of missed missed on the hoop there. Missed with the feedback. Almost uh, when, I was playing, when I was playing the game, that fielding animation there, I thought for a second there my cap might have missed that ball. It just my fielder kind of locked in, locked into the circle there, and I didn't think I was quite on, under it. But he was able to make the play. We get a two-hit win, and the opponent had four hits. And... I felt like I squared up a few balls, but there, if, as you can see, Don Sutton 5-0. Those are those are games all online, and uh, I have like a 1.5 ERA with him right around. So he did give up a run in this game, or no, 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 he did not give up any runs. And uh, yeah, we're looking to looking to make a push towards World Series, get the one nothing win in that game. But thanks, that's gonna do it for this guy, that this video, guys. Thank you guys for watching. Leave a like and subscribe. Peace out.